thought about heaven lately? What it will be like? Maybe what you'll do when you're there? Well, New York Times best-selling author John Eldridge delves into this subject in his new book and reminds us that God has promised heaven on earth and a life of ultimate restoration. Welcome back, John. Thank you, Maggie. Great to be here. Yeah, I really enjoyed your book. It challenged me a lot. Um, and especially now at Crossroads, as we still mourn our founder, David Maine's right. death. And, you know, talking about heaven, you start off the book talking about a crisis of hope that we're going through because mm. the world is just in shambles. We, you know, you read the news every single day, mm -hmm. there is another crisis. Describe this crisis of hope and what we're going through. Yeah, I think um, you, you have all the natural disasters, you have the terrorist strikes, you have tragic things like Las Vegas. And um, I think people are actually in a place now of asking, what do we put our hope in? Mm. Um, suicides are at an all-time high, um, and especially among our young people. It's the second leading cause of death for millennials and the first in the UK. Um, you have antidepressants now are the third most common prescription drug. And, and I think the World Health Organization just reported that um, depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide. Mm. Now, I believe in medication, by the way, as a therapist, and I think it can do enormous good. However, I think what this is pointing to is something going on in the human heart mm -hmm. that, that really is a crisis of hope. What, what is it we're supposed to be looking forward to about our lives? Mm. You talk about in the book, All Things New, about a year that you would like to not see anymore. You went through a rough time loss. Your wife was going through so much pain with her hip. Yeah. Just describe what you were going through and also the hope that yeah. you clung to through yeah. that journey. Yeah, exactly. Last year was a hard year for the Eldridge household. Yeah. Um, but as I've shared that, I think it was a hard year for a number of people, mm -hmm. actually. We had a suicide in our extended family and I was the one to get the phone call. Mm -hmm. um, and then my son and daughter were so happy to be pregnant with their first child. Actually, Sam, who was here on the show yeah, with me last yeah. time when I was here. Um, and then they went through a terrible, brutal miscarriage and I actually buried my oh. grandson. Um, and then my dear friend Craig, uh, mm. 40 years, um, passed away of cancer. And it was just one blow after another. And Stacy needing surgery and chronic pain for m nine months. and. It was during that time that I asked the same question. What is it I'm supposed to be looking forward to? I, I love God mm -hmm. and I believe that there's a lot of restoration in this life. I really do. We kind of devoted our whole ministry to seeing restoration happen in people's lives. But at some point you do ask yourself, what is it that we're looking forward to? What do I do with all this loss? I think that's the question. Yeah. Um, for individuals and, and just kind of for the world right now, what do we do with all this loss? Mm. And so you list what I find fascinating. Again, I'm gonna use the word challenge because it really challenged me to think about this word hope, this mm. idea of hope. And you say that there are three types of hope, casual hope, precious hope, and ultimate hope. Yeah, yeah. Hope um, springs eternal in the human heart, said Alexander Pope. Hope is natural to human beings. You hear people say it all the time. I hope I get this flight. Yeah. Right. Hope this dinner turns out. That would be casual. Right. Casual hopes. Yeah. Okay. But then you have something more precious, like I really hope my kid does well in mm. school. Right. I really hope that um, this CAT scan comes back mm. clean. Right. I hope that um, my mother gets well. Mm. Right. Those would be I would call precious hopes. Mm -hmm. Right. And but then there's ultimate hope. There is something that Hebrews calls the anchor of the soul. Mm. Hebrews 6, 19, we have this hope as the anchor of the soul, mm. or the message describes it as an unbreakable spiritual lifeline, mm. right? Okay, so I wanted to know what's that hope? Yeah. Like that's what I began to look for. It's like, what is the anchor of the soul? What is that hope? And the stunning news is it's restoration. Mm the restoration of all things. Mm. Jesus says the most, the most staggering thing in Matthew 19, 28 and 29. See, Peter has actually just asked him the same question I was asking myself. He, he said um, to Jesus, it's cost us a lot to be your followers. Mm. It's cost us to follow you. What are we supposed to be looking forward to? Mm. And Jesus doesn't rebuke the question. He doesn't tell Peter, come on, service is its own reward. 
Here's what he says. He says, Peter, I tell you the truth. At the renewal of all things, mm -hmm. when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, he says, all of you who have followed me and you have lost loved ones mm -hmm. or houses, even places that are precious to you, fields, like even careers, mm -hmm. your dreams. He says to him, all of that is going to be restored mm -hmm. to you in addition to eternal life. And I, I honestly, I had this reaction of the renewal of all things. Where has this been all my life? Yeah. And you've read the Bible countless times. I've heard numerous sermons on heaven, right? I've read books on heaven. And I've always thought heaven was up there somewhere, yeah. right? Uh, and and it, to be honest, the eternal church service in the sky. Right. Right? Like, right. I mean, yeah. I've been well, in a number yeah. of church services You're where... Like, we're going to worship the Lord to worship, <laughs> you know, to worship the Lord forever. Yeah. And then Jesus describes it as the renewal of all things. Mm -hmm. And that, that began this deep look into what are the promises of restoration to us? Peter picks up the sermon, by the way. He, he asked Jesus the question. He took notes. Um, and then in Acts, Peter's now giving one of his famous Acts sermons. And he says, Jesus must remain in heaven until... Mm -hmm. The time comes for God to restore yeah. everything. And the word he uses there is very powerful. It's apocatostasis. It's um, when Jesus heals a man's withered hand in the gospel of Mark and he restores it, apocatostasis. Mm -hmm. It means to put things back into God's original intention. Mm. Okay, we're going to continue. We're going to take a short break. And when we return, we're going to talk more about this heaven. And I'm going to ask John what he has against bucket lists. We'll be right back.